Hey guys, still here and welcome back to my tutorial series on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In this installment we're talking about guns, main guns, and the considerations around them. It's not going to be a tutorial that tells you do this and you'll win, because every encounter is going to be different, and the game is all about trying out guns, trying out configurations, and trying setups that work for you. The most important question that I almost ask myself when I'm building a new ship is, what sort of ship am I going to be fighting? What sort of role do I want this particular ship to fulfill? And that is going to mainly de uh, well, determine the sort of guns that you want on your warship. If you're looking at the main guns, you have a couple of different options right from the outset. You can go for centerline guns or side guns. Now, as the name indicates, the centerline guns fit within the centerline of the ship and cannot be fitted anywhere else. Now, the game does sort of force you into the role where it says, hey, you can only place them on these pluses, but that's not actually true. You can actually put these guns pretty much wherever you like, of course, within the limitations of your main tower, secondary tower, funnels, and other components of your ship. Now, the alternative is, of course, the side guns. And the side guns can be fitted almost everywhere else. And again, don't strictly adhere to those plus icons because they're not telling the whole story. Now the problem with these side mounted guns is that of course they don't always fire and that's because they might not be on the right side of the ship. On top of that, sometimes you have a ship that is not wide enough to put down two turrets, which is the situation I have here. If I were to go for smaller turrets, let's say nine inch triples, I could put one down on each side of the ship. And with the mirror mode enabled, that should be done automatically. So let's say we're going to put down one here, and normally it automatically mirrors, but there we go. Now we have one port mounted and one starboard mounted. Now, let's say you're building a battleship. Your target is an enemy battleship. In this case, I would go for big guns. But there is another design decision that you're going to have to make. What is the range? What is the range that you're fighting at? And are you fighting a bigger ship? Like, is it a really, really massive battleship, or... Are you fighting something a bit smaller? Are you also going to be fighting other ships? Are you going to be fighting destroyers? Are you going to be fighting light cruisers? Because the bigger the guns get, the slower they reload. And the bigger the guns get, the more penetration they get, the more damage they do. If you look at the 9-inch gun, you can see that at the fifth row it says damage 1286. If you go all the way over to the 18-inch gun, this thing does a whopping 39,393 damage. But the reload on this gun is 83 seconds, and that's with the standard configuration, standard reload. So that's 83 seconds. This one is 25 seconds. So by the time that this thing has reloaded, you've already pumped out three salvos from the 9-inch gun. The problem, however, with the 9-inch gun comes in the form of penetration. If you look at, let's say, 15,000 meter range, at which range you're going to be probably still using plunging fire, which means that the fire from the shells is going to come almost straight down, in which case you're doing penetration to the deck, not the belt. In case you don't know these terms, the belt is the sort of horizontal part of the ship, so your shells are going to be striking from an angle like that. The deck is everything you see here, and that is usually much thinner. And the shells are going to come plunging in like that. So at about 15,000 meter range, you usually are at the, the edge of deck slash belt penetration. Anyway, the 9-inch gun has 7.6 inches of belt penetration and 3.6 inches of deck penetration. That is usually more than enough to take on a light cruiser or a cruiser. Against a battleship, well, you're going to struggle. Because if I just look at this battleship, and sure enough, this is a super battleship from the French in 1940, this thing already starts with 11 inches of belt armor and 6 inches of deck armor. So this 9-inch gun, uh, centerline 9-inch, would not be able to do any kind of damage against this ship at 15,000 meter range using either plunging fire or direct fire. If I would want to go through my 11-inch belt armor, and it's not actually 11-inch because you get an armor quality boost of 70%, meaning that you can just add 70% of 11-inch to that armor. So this 9-inch 
at 7,500 meters would normally be able to penetrate 12.5 inches of armor, so normally it would do. But with this armor quality, it's not going to be possible. If I up this to Krupp 4, I get a 100% armor quality boost, and that means I effectively have 22 inches of belt armor. So this 9-inch gun, great against cruisers, great against light cruisers, somewhat useful against destroyers, but against battleships, not so handy. If you go all the way to the other side of the spectrum, this one at 15,000 meters does 24.5 inches of belt penetration. So this one would cut clean through the ship. It will go right through the armor. However, if you miss, you're going to have to be reloading for another 83 seconds. So sure enough, you might not be able to do damage with the 9 inch, but at least you get some salvos off. And again, if you're fighting light cruisers, you want more salvos because they're usually a bit harder to hit, so you need more salvos to actually do some damage. If you're fighting a battleship, then you usually want bigger guns. Sure enough, they're slower to reload, but it's also a bigger target, so it's relatively easy to hit. Now, if you look at the shell plunging fire, so the deck penetration, the deck penetration on these guns, um, and actually let's make something a little bigger because these don't have a range of, 12, of uh, 25 clicks, these can penetrate 16.3 inches of deck armor. And that makes these battleship guns a lot more suitable to fighting at range. Because at range, you can actually be penetrating more deck armor, because the shells are coming down more vertical, than you are at short range. The closer you get, the less of an angle the shells have. And the more you're going to be just firing at, well, pretty much horizontal spreads like that, instead of almost vertical shells coming in from the top. So in the case of 12-inch guns, ideally you would keep these 12-inch guns a bit farther away, out to a range of, let's say, 20 kilometers, because there you do still do 12.1 inches of deck penetration. Which, if you wanted to penetrate the battleship as it currently is, with 6 inches of deck armor, plus a 100% armor quality bonus, so that makes for 12 inches of deck armor, this would be perfect. And you would actually be able to go through that deck. Now, if you go for the 18-inch guns, and you're still fighting at, what did we pick? Uh, 20,000 meters. You're going to be penetrating 22 inches of deck armor. Which, well, can be a bit of a problem. Because if you have a shell that penetrates too far or too fast, it doesn't have the time to aim the fuse. And that means that the shell is going to pass right through the ship and out the other side without doing a whole lot of damage. And that's the over-penetration mechanic. It does some damage, but really not that much. So, overall design decisions. First are, what are you going to be fighting? And is that a big ship? Is that a small ship? Uh, sure, it is satisfying to one-shot a destroyer with an 18-inch gun. And it works. I've done it. But it relies much, much more on luck. If you're fighting an enemy battleship, I would argue that you go for bigger guns. Not necessarily the 18-inch guns. Because the guns also have another quality to them. If you look all the way to the 9-inch, you can see that it says X3, so times 3, 9-inch gun, Mark V. And the Mark V element is important. Because the higher the mark of the gun, the more bonuses and buffs that it gets. It's going to get more accuracy, it's going to get a better rate of fire, and these are all very important elements. If you look at the accuracy at, let's say, 10,000 meters, it's 7.8%. If you look at the accuracy at, uh, what, what did I say? Uh, 10,000 meters, 7.8%. This one, 10,000 meters, 4.8%, because it's only a Mark III gun. So this is another consideration. Try and get somewhere in the range of Mark III to Mark, well, Mark IV or Mark V is ideal. Mark III less so. And um, here, for example, the Mark the 15-inch guns Mark IV, they strike a really nice balance between the 9-inch with their Mark Vs and their very good accuracy, and the penetration and just raw firepower that those 18-inch guns have. And yes, it is satisfying to have just a full salvo of 18-inch guns go off. But keep in mind, you're doing that every 83 seconds. That's a lot of time in a battle. And especially if you're fighting smaller foes, faster foes, if you want a more versatile battleship, I would argue that 15-inch, 16-inch, 17-inch are slightly better. Now then there's the decision, do I go for one, two, or three barrels? Uh, there is quite a bit of discussion about this. 
The single barrels are really not that beneficial. If you look at their stats for accuracy at 10,000 meters, this one has 5.5%, this one has 5.5%, and this one has 5.2%. And that is because the 5.2% is impacted as it is a triple barrel, and the triple barrels sort of impact the accuracy of the barrel right next to them. So it is slightly less accurate, but you're throwing out more shells. This is a salvo of three shells, and this is a salvo, of course, of one or two shells. Why would you ever want to use the single? Well, early on in the game, you don't get access to a lot of different guns, uh, especially cruisers. They start out with single barrel guns, usually. They are also lighter turrets. The weight is only 896 tons, and then it ramps up to 1,346 and even 1,915. Still, you could argue, well, if I add two of these, I'm at almost 1,700 tons. Well, sorry, actually almost 1,800 tons. Whereas if I add one of these, I actually have just 100 tons more, and I have three barrels. And yes, that is another decision. It is all going to come down to what ship you're fighting and what sort of ship you want to build. As far as I'm concerned, there's no real right and wrong choice. There's only a, uh, a several different ways to play the game. And as long as you're having fun, I would say that you're playing the game correctly. Sure, you can go for historic builds, you can go for massive gun builds, you can go for meme builds with all sorts of different main guns, but this is entirely up to you. Have fun with it, and if you have any questions about the guns, let me know down below in the comment section.